In this lesson, we will be studying applications and problem solving with inequalities. I wanted to start by um, working on translating um, some sentences in, written in English um, and translating them to an inequality, an expression with a variable and an inequality symbol. So let's look at this first one. It says Sarah worked no fewer than 15 hours last week. Sarah worked no fewer than 15 hours last week. Now, when you say no fewer, that means the least number of hours that she could have worked is 15, right? But no fewer than that, no less than 15. So 15 is the minimum, if you will, 15 hours or something more than that, correct? So if we let, let's choose a variable. Um, how about H for hours? So if we let H be the number of hours, let H be the number of hours that Sarah worked, then this expression would be translated as H is greater than or equal to 15. That means the number of hours that she worked is either equal to 15, that's that little line right here. So she actually worked 15 hours equal to 15, or something more than 15, right? Greater than or equal to 15. Remember, it says no fewer, so you cannot go less than 15, either 15 hours or more. Let's go to the next one. The price of that Volkswagen Beetle convertible is at most $31,210. The price is at most. So the greatest value is $31,210. So the Beetle is either $31,210 or something less than that, right? So if we choose, how about we choose the letter P for price? The price is at most $31,210. So it can actually equal that value, but it cannot be more than that, right? When you say is at most, that means the price of the beetle could be exactly equal to $31,210 or something less than that. So I'm going to say less than or equal to $31,210. Okay, let's go to the next one. The time for the test, let's use the variable T for time. The time for the test was between 45 and 55 minutes. So the time was between... 45 and 55 minutes. So that means the time was greater than 45. Ooh, that's sloppy. Hold on, let me see if I can make that a little bit better. The time was greater than 45, but less than 55. You see that? Um, you see two different inequality or two inequality symbols here. So the time is somewhere between 45 and 55. Uh, reading right, uh, left to right here, it's time is less than 55, but reading right to left, it says time is greater than 45. So the time is greater than 45 minutes, but less than 55 minutes. Camila's weight is less than 110 pounds. Now, it's less than 110 pounds. It cannot equal 110 pounds. It says it's less than 110 pounds. So how about W for weight? and it's less than 110 pounds. That one was pretty straightforward, I, I feel. Next, the number, or that number, is more than negative two. How about the letter N for that number? So that number, N, is more than negative two, okay? The costs of production of that marketing video cannot exceed $12,500. Now, how about um, C for cost? Now, the cost must not be more than $12,500, but it can be equal to $12,500, but it cannot be more than that. So the cost must be less than, or it could actually be equal to $12,500. I hope this is making sense for you. At most, 1,250 people attended the concert. At most. So the maximum number of people that were there were 1,250. But maybe something less than that, right? But nothing more than 1,250. At most, 12, 1,250 people attended the concert. So if we use P for people, that means the number of people that were there were 
less than 1,250 or equal to 1,250 people. Yesterday, at least 23 people got speeding tickets. Speeding tickets. How about S for speeding tickets? Yesterday, at least 23 people got tickets. Yesterday, at least 23 people. So either 23 people got tickets for speeding or 24 people or 25 or 30 people or, or 50 people, right? At least 23 people. So at the very minimum, 23 people got a speeding ticket. So we're going to say greater than or equal to 23. All right, check this out. To cater a company's annual lobster bake cookout, Jayla's Catering charges a $325 setup fee plus $18.50 per person. The cost cannot exceed $3,200. How many people can attend the cookout? First of all, I'm going to say let P equal the number of people at the cookout. Okay, I'm just going to write that down. Let P equal or represent the number of people, okay, at the cookout. So that's what P represents. Every time you see me write down P, that means the number of people at the cookout. Now, no matter how many people go to the cookout, the setup fee is the setup fee. It is what it is, $325, regardless of how many people are there. So now, no matter what happens, we know that there will be a $325 setup fee. Plus, so you can even see the word plus here, plus $18.50 per person. For every person that's at the cookout, it's $18.50 for that person, for every single person. So that would be $18.50 times P, $18.50 per person. Now, the price, the cost cannot exceed. That means it must not get larger than, right? You must not spend more than $3,200. That's the most you can spend is $3,200. But if it's something less than that, then that's great. But you cannot exceed $3,200. So the correct symbol here would be less than or equal to $3,200. You must stay less than or equal to $3,200. Now, the job, our job at this point is just to solve for um, P. So let's subtract 325 from both sides. Like this. These 325s go away, right? And you're left with... 1850, 18.50, excuse me, P is less than or equal to 2875. And now what I'm going to do to both sides is divide both sides by 1850, 18.50, like this. And that will isolate my variable P. And let me move the screen up here for us. So now we have P must be less than or equal to, now this is the number of people, 155.405, blah, 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 all right? Now, of course, we're not going to say um, that we can have at most 155 and a half people. A half of a person doesn't make sense. It's like, what, only your lower body can go to the cookout or the uh, only your arms can go? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So we need a whole number, right? Each person, right, their whole body is going to go. So we're going to say that um, uh, how many people can attend the cookout? We're going to say at most 155 people. All right, cool. That was fun. Let's do another problem. All right, here's a fun problem. The U.S. Department of Agriculture recommends that for a typical 2,000 calorie daily diet, no more than 20 grams of saturated fat be consumed. In the first three days of a four-day vacation, Ethan consumed 26 grams, 17 grams, and 22 grams of saturated fat. So I guess the first day he went over, right? Um, the second day he was under, the third day he went over. Uh, determine how many grams of saturated fat Ethan can consume on the fourth day if he is to average no more than 20 grams of saturated fat per day. Okay, how about we let the variable x represent how many grams of saturated fat um, this guy can have on the fourth day. 
Okay, so X represents the number of grams of saturated fat he can have on the fourth day. Now, remember how you um, determine the average of something. You add up all of the numbers, and then you divide by how many numbers there are, right? In this case, we have four different numbers because it's a, it's a four-day vacation. So we have the number of grams he had on the first day, which is 26, plus the number of grams he had on the second day, 17, plus the number of grams he had on the third day, 22, plus the number of grams that he's going to have on the fourth day, which is X. And then we divide all of that sum by the number four because there's one, two, three, four different numbers. Now that will give us the average. But remember that the average must um, not be more than, no more than 20 grams per day no more than 20 grams per day. So it can actually, it can, it, it, he can have 20 grams per day, but he can't have anything more than that per day on average, right? So 20 grams is the max per day. So this is how I'm gonna set up my um, inequality. So I'm gonna take the first number, of, uh, the first day he had 26 grams, plus second day he had 17, plus the third day he had 22, plus the fourth day, we don't know that yet. That's what we're trying to figure out. So plus x. And divide by 4. If it had been a 3-day vacation, we'd be dividing by 3, right? Or you know whatever. So the number of the number of numbers you're adding is what you're going to be dividing by, right? So had this been a 5-day vacation, I'd probably be dividing by 5. Now remember that the number of grams per day uh, must average no more than 20 grams per day. No more than. But you can equal 20 grams, but nothing more than that. So it must be less than or equal to 20 grams per day. All right, very good. The way I'm going to solve this is I want to get rid of this fraction. How about you guys? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Actually, let me not mess with the original. Uh, let, me, let me copy this down over here, okay? Just so that you can see the original setup. I'm copying this down again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this big old fraction on the left. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. 4 is the only denominator in this problem. And that will get rid of my uh, fraction. So on the left-hand side, of course, this 4 and that 4 divide out. And so all you're left with is 26 plus 17 plus 22 plus x is less than or equal to 80. I need to add 26, 17, and 22. That gives us 65, so now we have 65 plus x is less than or equal to 80. Let's subtract uh, 65 from both sides, right? This is isolating the variable x. And now you have no more constants on the left. I need to move the screen up again. So now we have x, which is the number of grams of saturated fat he can have on the fourth day, uh, is less than or equal to um, what is this? 15, 15, um, because, um, you know, this makes sense that he can have at most, at most 15 grams of saturated fat on the fourth day. That makes sense to me because, um, the first day he went over, right? The, the, um, what do they say that the, what we should have is what 20 grams per day on average. And on the first day he went overboard, he had 26 grams. And on the third day he went over too. So I feel like he's going to have to make up for that by going, you know, significantly lower than the average of 20 grams per day that's recommended. So, uh, the final answer is that Ethan, I think is his name, um, can have at most 15 or no more than no more than 15 grams of saturated fat on the fourth day. All right, so there's a sentence there to make sure that we we're all on the same page. Um, all right, so this is the final um, answer. Um, I just want to tie in to a previous lesson. You can say all of this in set builder notation. Set builder notation. Let me show you that now. And set builder notation would be written like this. It's the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 15. Okay? The set, the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 15. Now don't forget x represents the maximum number of grams of saturated fat he can have on the fourth day. 
So the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 15. That's called set builder notation. Okay, um, so you have a sentence in plain English there, and then you also have um, the final answer in uh, set builder notation. All right, I hope this was fun for you as it was fun for me. Um, I'll catch you in a later lesson. See ya.